Hello everyone! Welcome to yet another episode of this video podcast series. Now in this episode, I speak to Brandon Mill Core. So Brandon is a multidisciplinary artist from Singapore whose work focuses on making socio-economic commentary, especially about the state of conservation in Singapore. Now Brandon just wrapped up his exhibition at the substation and it was called On Borrowed Land. And in On Borrowed Land, he painted portraits of the sellers at the Sungai Road Thieves Market before it closed in 2017. Now, Brandon also has an online brand and it's called The Toxic Friends Company. You can find the link in the description box below. And I find this brand super interesting because he sells products that parody millennial pop culture. Now, Brandon and I had this grand idea of sitting on borrowed land in the middle of the Pio to have a conversation. By and large, it worked, but it was super warm, so you'll see us perspire right through the conversation. There's also a fair bit of ambient noise, but you can still make out the conversation quite clearly. Right, so this is part one of three of our conversation, and in this part, we talk about his background, his interest in art, and how he got involved in art in the first place. Now, if you like this part of the conversation, please do check out the other two videos. All right, I'm ready. All so, right. All right, so this is what I know about you, okay? And sorry, there's gonna be a lot of ambient noise in this, but I'll try to speak up, we will try to speak up. So, this is what I know about you. Um, there are two things which I find most interesting. The first is that, I first actually found out about you from a Straits Times article about the Sungai, um, thieves, the Thieves Market. When it was closing down, you had this, I think, really interesting idea to paint portraits of people um, who, who were selling things at the market but were being sort of forced out. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is I know you have a really interesting online brand called The Toxic Friends Company, Toxic Friends Co. And I want to talk more about that. But before we, and, and is there anything else that people should know about? About your art or anything? Um, there's more to come. <laughs> okay, there's more to come. Very so, good. Slowly. Yeah. Very good. So, the first thing I'm actually curious about is how you got into art in the first place. Like, is it from a kid? Were you painting things when you were a kid? Or is it just something that came up when you were in like army or something? No, I think it's um, quite common. Like, everyone says, uh, everyone, everyone's born an artist, whether they um, really, it's like, it's whether yeah. they... I'm not, I'm, I'm saying <laughs> Yeah, but I guess it's whether you want to uh, concentrate or you have a passion for it. So I guess it's really from young, since young. Um, I took a lot of interest in art. And as I got older, I realised that art is examinable. So why not okay. score on something that you are you are interested in? Um, so you, you did it in secondary school? I JC? did not do... I, I, I didn't do O-level art in secondary mm. school, but I did in JC. Okay. So yeah, then from then on... Yeah, I would say that in, in secondary school, during my sec 2 streaming, it got me like first position because they, they graded Congrats. art. Yeah. So, yeah, but then my other other like studies were quite bad. La, but <laughs> but yeah. yeah, so I would say since young, I had an interest okay. in art. So it was something which uh, caught a lot of attention of my um, relatives, my friends. When they mm-hmm. think about me, they think about me being someone who, who does art. So I guess it's something which uh, I like to portray myself yes. as someone who does art. But has it always been painting or was it like you were experimenting with all kinds of things and then you found out, hey, I'm good at this particular thing? Oh, uh, okay. I would say um, it's multidisciplinary because mm. I do a lot of uh, different... I Okay, for my A level, I did like conceptual photography. Okay. So it was like set photography, so working with models, yep. creating prop sets, editing, um, editing, post-production and stuff like that. And then uh, it went into um, illustration. So I okay. do a lot of like uh, illustrations of like social political things, I would guess. I would and, say. and by the way, this is weird because we're breaking the, the fourth wall, but I think this is why it's relevant that we're sitting in the middle of the bio. <laughs> in the bot- like, but yeah, oh, sorry, anyway, go on. Social political issues. Yes. Although I don't really want to get into politics because it's, it's yeah. a little bit tricky. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. social commentary. Yeah. yeah. And for painting and drawing, I, w- I guess that's just the fundamentals. Like everyone starts with that. Yeah. So I would say I progressed to more uh, technological based um, expression of um, my work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to photography. And were there like artists that you were particularly interested in and like sort of ins- inspired you? I know the words are terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. This There's this artist that's called Jonathan Hobin. So he does, um, his photo series was called. Um, um, in the playroom or child's playroom or something yeah. like that. So basically what he does is um, gets um, children models to reenact a very controversial and um, controversial 
pictures. For yeah. example, like um, what can I think of? Like there was a there was one. I mean, in US to reflect the dark times in US. So there was one. Which which, which which era was this? Era. As, oh, there are, there are a lot of different eras. So basically, oh, okay. so um, like different many... news that made okay. made headlines in US. Got so it. have you heard of the Jonestown massacre? Yeah, yeah. 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 So he got <laughs> <laughs> he got kids to reenact it. Yeah, okay. but instead it's all in the setting of a of a child's playroom. Mm-hmm. So he's using um these children models to to address all these um, very dark times yeah. in US in a rather light hearted manner, which I yeah. thought was very interesting. Because it's something people don't really like don't wouldn't really like to talk about. Yeah. But he does it in a very uh, interesting way. Which I think is very applicable in Singapore with all the censors, uh, censor, uh, censorship censorship. Oh my god, they're censoring me. They, they're censoring me and the bus <laughs> just censored you as well. Yeah, but censorship anyway. in Singapore. So I I kind of did... I was inspired by him to uh, create my series of work in, for A-levels. Okay. It was basically um, conceptual photography. It's called mm-hmm. um, Tales of a Sunny Island. Okay. Yeah, so I t- I look into Singapore's um, past and see what like had happened that was... Um, not really nice and like, yep. disasters and whatnot. So I took into a court that was like this um, the collapse of a building. The it's the, the it's hotel, some hotel, right? yeah, some the, hotel yeah. building. So uh, with that and also during the period of SARS. Okay. So it's all these dark times of Singapore and I infused them with uh, fairy tales, blurring the line of um, fiction and reality. Okay. So I came out with two photo series. And so you had your friends reunited or their cousins who were kids or? Uh, my family and friends, okay. um, especially my mom, she's my greatest supporter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. and my classmates. Yeah. Yeah. So they were my models. Uh, most I usually work with people I know because it's yeah. easier. Yeah. And I don't have to pay them. <laughs> I'm just a kid, I have no money. So I don't have really I don't I don't pay them. So yeah, yeah people who are willing to help me. Like. Yeah. And so when when you had these ideas, okay, so what, what I'm curious about in art education in Singapore right, is so I've, I've spoken to some people who are in the theatrical world um, and a lot of them have told me and you know, all my friends from school but they told me that the theatre program, theatre education program in Singapore is super grades oriented and it focuses focuses a lot on on sort of like getting you a grade rather than maybe teaching you something that might be more educational is that how it has been for you in Singapore? And it's okay if it's maybe too sen- sensitive for you to talk about, but in general, what was your experience with like arts education in Singapore? Um, for arts education, I think to start it off, um, I would say art is not something for everybody. Like yeah. People, maybe for yourself, like they don't really like art. So if you were yeah. to force them I to, like it, but I'm just not talented. Okay, not, so, okay. so normally when people are, are not talented at it, yeah. and not good at it, yeah. Singaporeans, they, they wouldn't like it, because okay. they don't want to show people that they are bad at it. Mm-hmm. So, um, I would say um, it's difficult to get people interested to teach art. Because I did teach part-time um, mm-hmm. as a relief teacher for mm-hmm. art and it was very difficult to get the attention of my students who are totally not interested yeah. in art. Yeah. And I wouldn't say I found the answer to, to tell them why art is important because I myself have not found the answer yet. Yeah. It's just something I like. Okay, so. I would say for the arts education in Singapore, it's definitely not as great oriented as um, what your theatre friend would say. Okay. Because um, I would say the teachers try to, uh, they don't really talk about the grade much, at least for my teachers. Yeah. They don't really concentrate on the grade, more of like telling, um, trying to increase the confidence level of uh, my peers. Mm. I mean, I, I really know my shit, la, so like they'll concentrate yeah. <laughs> while I was still schooling. So, yeah. um, because a lot of um, when I talk to my teachers after I graduated, they say that it's more of like um, showing students to be confident in expressing themselves, mm-hmm. especially um, in our society where we only want to answer and ask like questions that are yeah. relevant and, yeah. and stuff like that. So I guess it's about it's not about art itself, but the values that comes with it. Yeah, that was for me la, and what I've observed. Something yeah. I didn't realize then, but after talking to my teachers when I graduated. Yeah. Yeah, I've grown to know that it's more of these life lessons you learn together. That's quite cool. So, do you think that everyone had that experience? Or do you think it was more of a personal thing? Like, what I'm curious about is like, do you think systemically everyone sort of had, had that point of view about, about the arts programs in, in JC? Or was it like, that was like your personal finding out that kind of... Okay, not JC, because JC you 
those people who choose art in JC yeah. if you really want to do oh, art. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So secondary yeah. school and everyone is all forced to do yeah. art. So <laughs> I would say, um, I can only say within my yeah. social circles. So when I started teaching, I asked my, my friends, hey, yeah. hey, do you know uh, Mrs. Blank and Blank? Uh, do you think her art lessons were nice, yeah. but were fun? And because we had two different teachers, yeah. and one was clearly more favorable than the other, okay. right? Okay. So I asked them, what, 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 what was it that made it made the lesson interesting? Yeah. So the reply was, um, uh, what, what was the reply? What? <laughs> oh, <shit>. No. Well, <laughs> something along the lines of um, understanding the the students. Yeah. Um, getting down, not, I wouldn't say mm-hmm. getting to the level of the students mm-hmm. and understanding. So, um, it really depends on the individual school. The, the the, the group of colleagues yeah. and the dynamics and how they work yeah so yeah because I would say I've heard of people and experience of mm-hmm. other schools where it's not they are definitely very great oriented because mm-hmm. they have mm-hmm. to meet like quotas yes. meet, like, and stuff like that um, we need to norm this norm and yes. that kind of thing I know which, that from my own educational yeah, experience which I, which I, know, which I, I, I it's very frowned upon for me like, I don't yeah. like it especially yeah. when I'm inside this system yeah. I don't want to be associated to that yeah. so I got out quickly so yeah so I would say for my own personal ex- experience when I was a kid in secondary yeah. school having arts education I think it was um, very well it was, it, it, it was a very good experience mm-hmm. like, the teachers, the, yeah. the school, they were, you can see the significant yeah. um, budgeting given to the arts yeah. program which is not evident in some other places. I, I, I think that's so important because if you want to think about developing like arts culture in Singapore, whatever that means, I know it's a very big term but like in general, high, maybe a higher awareness or appreciation of artistic pursuits, right? You need the education to be in that way where it's more about like you know, building interest and passion and maybe the KPIs are not so strict and not so fixed. But that's how the kids actually learn things. I don't know. Yeah. I'm it, it I struggle a bit with the, the idea of like we need to grade everything and yeah. I would say for like secondary school kids it was more of um, maybe don't like concentrate on the skills and techniques because yeah. They don't give a shit. It's yeah. more of like getting them <laughs> interested in the whole idea of art and what yeah. it can do, expression, um, commentary, yeah. and stuff like that. Because like maybe only in JC you start to do, you start to concentrate in that. Because yeah. um, the cohort is smaller, the people yeah. who are interested is smaller, and then you hone the skills. Yeah. So I think the problem, okay, not problem, the issue that is going on now in secondary school art education mm-hmm. is them concentrating on the practical terms of art. Yeah. Which I feel is um, it's inevitable because the, the parents want wants to see them I don't know paint well. pain better. I mean, you, you, you if you're wasting wasting my child's time on this part yeah. part of the school yeah. curriculum, jolly well better make him do something yeah. better. Yeah. Uh, have a, have a evidence yeah. have evidence that is well in there So, okay. hello again. I hope you enjoyed this part of the conversation, and I hope you learned something. Now, please let me know what you think. Either comment or reach out to me directly. And if you enjoyed this part of the conversation, then please look out for the other videos. I'll see you soon.